Hey everyone, I promise this is the last Valheim video I'm making for a while. After this is going to be non-Valheim videos, so if you're sick of this, don't worry. But I just want to demonstrate my mod so I can put this up on the mod page and people have more of an idea of what it's like. I just want to demonstrate the changes in the new mod. So I've built a refueler pylon, and what that will do is when you place it and you put coal or wood or ingots in there, not ingots, sorry, ores, it will put them in the nearby smelters. So for example, if you put some wood in there, you'll see that it's automatically loading the kiln. Now if we put some coal in there, you can see how it's slowly decreasing. And you see if we put some coal in there, then it's going to put all that coal into the smelter. See? 19 of 20. Now we just have to spawn in some copper ore to demonstrate with. And now if we put that in there, it'll start loading that into the smelter for us. There we go. This is really simple base automation. I know there's other mods out there that do this kind of thing, but I wanted the creative control over this aspect, just for my own sake. The next pylon we want to make is called the Necrogatherer pylon. And that will spawn Necrogatherers. I'll just spawn in some Necktails here. So I can place the pylon. There we go. And what this does is when you put Necktails in there, by default every 60 seconds a Necktail will be consumed and a necro -neck gatherer will pop out. necro -neck gatherers are basically undead necks that wander around picking up items off the floor and storing them in nearby chests. Whenever their inventory fills up, they'll go back to a chest and put stuff in it. They actually will bring stuff to any container nearby. It doesn't have to be a chest. So the idea behind these little guys is um, when I was playing solo, after every raid and just like the constant attacks and whatever, there'd be all this stuff just lying all over the floor everywhere. And picking it up is really tedious. So I thought it would be great to have a little guy to run around and get all that stuff for me and bring it back to chests and store it. So that's the whole point behind these little guys. Another thing about the Necros is that when they die, they don't just dump their stuff on the floor. It gets put in a container like you see that crate on their back? One of those spawns, and the items are inside that, and the thing about it is it floats. So you won't lose your stuff on the bottom of the ocean or whatever. Now let's demonstrate the spirit pylon. This is a defensive pylon, it's for static defense, and basically it just sits in your base, and when enemies approach it, it'll spawn ghosts. By default, only three ghosts can be made by this thing. And the ghosts are pretty squishy. They've only got 20 HP. But they're designed to sort of just run out and like distract enemies and they do pack a punch. Like they probably deal about the same as a default ghost would. So I've rallied the creatures of the forest and you'll see that when they come in range, the ghosts will start popping out of the pylon. There we go. Oh, and the guardian wraith, that comes from my cloak. It doesn't come from the pylon. I should actually unequip that so you don't get confused. But there you go, you see those shadowy things running off? Those are the ghosts from the pylon. They're pretty quick as you can see. They only last 30 seconds, then they die. They're not supposed to persist, they're kind of just meant to hang around for a little while and then poof out of existence once the threat is gone. Next, let's make a bat beacon. This is similar to the spirit pylon, but it's more advanced. Bats do significantly more damage, and they're also aerial units. They can fly up and intercept things. They're great on a raft, like if you've got the Valheim raft, because they'll attack sea monsters and stuff. There we go, little bats are starting to spawn. And they're very similar to the ghosts in their function in that they're timed. 
and they will poof out of existence after 30 seconds. These are really great in the Mistlands for intercepting things like um, those big floating gas sacks or whatever they are, but I can't say the name. Gals? I don't know. They kind of look like floating ticks. Now, next, let's equip the Spectral Shroud. So this is basically a cloak, and when you wear it, it will spawn a wraith if an enemy is nearby. The wraith lasts 10 seconds. It's really good for intercepting incoming death skeeters. The other thing the cloak does is it raises your necro level by 10, and it also gives you 25 storage capacity. It also looks really cool, and it billows black smoke. Stat-wise, it's no different to a troll cape. So let's demonstrate the wands. So the first wand you can make is called the Skeleton Wand. And with it equipped, you can create skeletal minions from bones. A Skeleton Warrior. And a Skeleton Archer. They can be told to follow you, and you can teleport them to your position. It can also be provided with armor, and this has an actual defensive effect. They'll become much more useful when they're equipped in armor. I'll just throw with these Certling Claws because they will spawn mages in. There you've got a Leather Armored Skeleton Archer and a Leather Armored Skeleton Warrior. Now if we pick up the Certling Claws and we spawn, if we make a Skeleton now, mages will be made. And mages throw fireballs like a Certling. Now let's spawn in some bronze, which is the next kind of armor that skeletons can wear. A mage, then an archer, and finally a warrior. Next let's go with iron. Warrior, archer, and we'll make a mage too. There we go. Now let's spawn in some black metal. Black metal mage, black metal archer, and black metal warrior. Make some more. And for the hell of it, we'll make some more mages. The mages are throwing fireballs. These are max level skeletons, so the enemies don't really have a prayer. This isn't tough enough though. This makes some um, trolls. We're going to need more of a challenge than that. Let's try some... Let's try some Draugr. If you make the Draugr want, you can make Draugr from any kind of meat in your inventory, as well as um, bones. And the least valuable meat is preferred over the more expensive kinds. So you'll work through your like your neck tails and your and whatever else like that before you reach chicken meat or or whatever. Seeker meat. Let's get some goblin brutes out. One thing to keep in mind with this mod is that everything is configurable. So if you find the skeletons are too strong, you can turn them down. If you're running a really tough server, you can make them more powerful as well. The other thing is that they scale to your necromancy level. So at low necromancy levels, your skeletons will be pretty weak. They're going to have around 20 hit points, and they're going to be using clubs 
and really crappy bows at first. Then as you level up, they'll start to feel better weaponry, like swords. And finally, at top level, they use the Draugr Axes. It's a modified version of the Draugr Axe that actually deals more damage than the Draugr Axe does. Archers and Mages scale in the same way. Mage is the most powerful minion you can make, aside of the Wraith, which is also very strong. Thanks for watching, I've got more videos and necromancy stuff coming soon.